Welcome back to The Runaround, brought to you by Hollibird Sports here on ESPN 1300 AM. I'm telling you, if you want great customer service for all of your running needs, check them out at hollibirdsports.com. Once again, that's Hollibird Sports. This is Greg Jubb, and I'm here with Brad Jager, and talking about all the meat coverage from and the past for the championships, we have something pretty cool at Running Maryland. What do we have, Brad? Well, we've just uh, got our live streaming uh, coverage of races going, got our own WOW as a server, and uh, built a pretty decent system, so we can go live to meets now. It's not choppy. You have a nice, smooth coverage. We did it at the state meet, and if you are interested in having our team come down and cover your event live, give us a call at uh, 410-868-9219, and I'll get back to you. Okay. And without further ado, we're being joined by Alexis Franklin of Old Mill High School, one of the top sprinters and hurdlers in the state. And also joining us is Hannah Oneda of Winters Mill High School, the fastest female distance runner in the state at the high school level. Alexis, Hannah, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Alexis, you got it. You got you got in. That's good. Uh, yeah. Did you find a telephone? I heard you lost your telephone last week, right? I did. It was crazy. <laughs> it was it was crazy. I it was it's so hard to keep in contact with people without it. Yeah, the age we live in, Lexi. The age we live in. Hey, you had a nice state meet. I mean, you've been running four four events at most of the league meets this year. You came to the state meet. You decided to run only three. What was the reasoning there? Um, pretty much. I really, I did try to go for four four events for the state meet. I did try to help my relay team get there, but our relay team just didn't quite make it. So, I mean, I was definitely pleased with my performances overall. I was happy to go for three individual events. Did you feel like the events were too close together? Because after you ran that smoke in 114, five, um, 500, you came back for the finals of what's normally your strongest event, the 55 hurdles, and it looked like you just were off a little bit there. I definitely was off. I, I don't understand why the events were set up so close together because – Really, they've never been like that. So coming to races with like 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes of rest back-to-back was very different. Um, That 500, I just ran it. I really, I wanted to win, but I wasn't really running to win. I really wanted to focus my strong suit on hurdling, but... I did better in my secondary events than I thought I would. Well, let's talk about that 500. That was a that was a close, close photo finish. You kind of took it out a little bit conservatively and really brought it home in the last you know, 200 meters or so. Was that your plan, or how'd that pan out for you? My plan was to hang back. I was I figured, well, if everyone's starting out really fast, maybe they'll eventually die down. And I started to notice like nobody was slowing down, and I was like, wow, well maybe like once they got. So the last lap, I figured I need to turn it on and go hard because I really wanted to catch you, Demi. I believe that's her name. Right. She was, I was trying to catch her, and I could just see myself inching up on her closer and closer as the race was coming to an end. And once we got to the finish line, it was just a matter of a lean, which was a really – that was kind of like my race of the day. Yeah, I know everyone was looking to the scoreboard on that one for the uh, official results because it was close. To, it was too close to call at that point. But uh, talking about close races, or in this case, the complete opposite, Hannah kind of ran away with the mile and the two mile, the two A state championships. Hannah, what do you think of your races? Um, I thought they they went pretty well. I mean, I came in thinking, okay, last week at counties. I mean, we ran counties a week before states, which was interesting. But I mean, I ran. Like, in pretty incredible times, then nothing that I thought that I could do at counties. And I was thinking, well, my God, I want to break five in the mile. And I want to see if I can at least repeat another 1045 again. And, um, well, I was a little disappointed in the mile. I think I got so nervous and I was, like, really, like, kept thinking about breaking five that I feel like when I'm more relaxed, I run a lot better. So that was kind of disappointing. So then I kind of went to the two mile, like, okay, I just want to, I just want to do well. I want to run relax. And that turned out to be pretty well too. So I'm happy with it. It's okay. You, now, take, well, you seem to be taking a real effort to negative split in the 3,200. You, we on, you come, came through the uh, 1,600, I think in about 526, yeah, 526. 526. And, and then all of a sudden you go, all right, there she goes and takes off. Um, do you find that a less painful way to run, or is it, or is it done by plan? Well, I mean, I actually, for the longest time, until about like three or four races ago, I 
just geared just going to have like even splits the entire time. And then one of the races, I think it was maybe regionals, I experimented and I said, hey, I want to see if I can go out really comfortable and just hit it for the last, you know, mile or whatever. And actually felt a lot better. And that's why it's kind of been like this pattern that I kept doing it again. And um, I think after running a 526 and running a 518, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I kind of feel like, okay, I know I can run a 518 after a 526. So maybe next time start at a little bit over, maybe after 600 meters, start really going to that second gear or whatever you would call it, you know, right. to get a better time. In order to compete against the national leaders who ran 10-13, 10-14 at the PR, Brooks PR Invitational in Oregon this past weekend, you're going to have to go out in 5-10, 5-11. Then you have to come back faster. You think you have the ability to do that? Um... You know, that'd be great. I would say that I would love to be able to have that ability right now, but I'm I'm probably going to, because um, I'm going to run New Balance, I think, two weeks from now. I really want to, and I'm going to run the 5K, and I'm thinking that it'll be really interesting to just be able to hang on to someone and hold it like a consistent pace rather than having to think, okay, I want to make a split here, or i got to make sure I run you know, like a 510 right now. I mean, I can. There, I think there'll be enough people spread out that I'll be able to like, hit on someone that I can, that that's my ability. I'm sure I can do like maybe like two 520s, but a 510 and then another 510, that that's, sounds pretty difficult for me right now. Lexi, you have the same, the same um, issues maybe sometimes with running all these Anne Arundel County meets is that you're so far out ahead of everybody, you, it doesn't take a lot for you to win your 500. When you get to the national level, um, you're not going to be able to sit and kick that last 200. How do you think uh, you're going to have to change maybe your training a little bit to, to get to that level? Well, as far as training, I know I'm definitely going to have to work as far as covering longer distances more. Um, I don't. I really focus on my sprint, and I really like the 500. It's it's not a sprint for me. It's really just running and hanging on, um, I feel like my entire mental strategy is going to have to change as a part of my training and um, just longer workouts because, to, to be honest, I don't, I didn't like the 500 and I only like the 500 because I do well in it and I know it helps me with outdoor as far as my 400 and getting that stronger, so training, I'm definitely going to start covering longer distances and getting my mental strategy together. From talking to you during the indoor season, it seems like you like the 800 even less. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I try to stay away from that as much as I can. Um, I know the 800, I've messed around a few times indoor and I've come pretty close to like my high school's record board. So I mean, I don't have a problem running it and if it's benefiting me, then why not? <laughs> now, Lexi, we just talked to Hannah about uh, what she would like to get out of the New Balance indoor meet, uh, the national meet. Are you going to be running that meet as well? I will not be running the indoor national meet, unfortunately. <laughs> are you going to run any more meets this indoor season, or are you focusing on outdoor at this point? I'm, at this point, I'm putting 100% of my focus towards outdoor. Um, I prefer outdoor over indoor. Just, I'm more comfortable in the outdoor season. I feel like I do so much better in outdoor than I do indoor. What's so, going to be your focus in outdoor track? What events? Um, my main event is probably going to be both. Well, I'm going to put my focus over three races. So probably the 100 meter hurdles, the 300 meter hurdles, and the 400 meter dash. Um, I definitely want to go at least 52 low or 52 high. My fault. Um, 52 high in the 400. I would definitely be so pleased with that. Yeah. Here with Olivia Ekmanet, my toughest competition, it was it was a really good race, and I mean, she gave me a reason to run, so I definitely want to try and accomplish that this year. That was a good race in the state outdoor championships last year. I remember sitting on top of the stadium when we were filming, and we were all kind of laying dollar bills down, saying who was going to beat who in that race. I think you had Olivia out to maybe the last 50, 60 meters, and then she just had another gear that last 50. Yes, she definitely did. I know I definitely I went out a lot faster than I thought I would. Um, my first 200, I went out in like a 24, 
And I was like, wow, like, I'm, I've never been, like, with her. So, I mean, I felt like my excitement kind of got the best of me. My adrenaline was up. So I was like, well, I guess I can just run and then hang on as best I can with whatever I have left. Right. And Hannah, talking to you now, uh, you said you're going to run the 5K at New Balance Indoor Nationals. Mm -hmm. And in outdoors, there's really no distance higher than the mile and the two miles. So what do you want to focus on coming outdoors, knowing that you're really better the higher the distance the mm. we go? Well, I would say that I'm definitely going to focus on the two mile again. But I know that you're supposed to be getting fat. You know everyone that's supposed to get faster in outdoor. And I've never had like a pretty a good outdoor season at all for like since sophomore, junior. Yes, yeah, sophomore and junior year. So um, I'm definitely going to focus on the two mile, but I really want to see if I can break five. That's like probably one of my main goals and high school with that time. And I'm um, probably going to try to run the 800 a couple of times. I didn't get the opportunity to run it at all for indoor and um, especially because our county meet got canceled. So I didn't get to run it or even qualify for regionals. So um, yeah, definitely 3,200 and just breaking the five in the mile. Right, so and you you were talking about breaking five minutes in the mile. You might want to work on your speed here. You when uh, Lexi, when you mentioned you want to run fifty two high in the four hundred, Hannah made a face in here like, <laughs> oh my lord. So we have two different runners here. Oh What's your God. plan to work to kind of get to that, you know, four fifty five, four fifty six mile or so? Well, I mean this this entire indoor season. It's interesting that you were talking about indoor earlier about um, running base and um, right. after you know being tired after cross country, especially for the distance runners. I got this idea, well, not really the idea, but I'm at Foot Locker and talked to a bunch of the California runners, and they said, well, we don't even have an indoor, so we just run base. And I was like, oh, that's, that's amazing. They're like, what a great idea. So I talked to um, um, Coach Rep, my coach, about just running base with um, another one of the runners, Weston. And that's basically what I've done this entire season. And so outdoor, I'm, I'm going to focus a little bit more on doing some workouts. And even though I hate it, doing speed work, probably some, like, 400s and 200s and then um, just to hopefully like help my form and turnover to get to that you know like last like 400 meters of a mile gear. yeah and also help you in the start of the race too not to go out so comfortable but to also be able to compete on a national level to go out fast I mean the old yeah. saying is in order to race fast you have to practice fast so going out and doing 80 90 miles a week sometimes isn't as successful as maybe doing a couple workouts of thousands or 600s Jesse <laughs> Jesse, if you're listening out there, I know you're just getting frustrated right now. But ladies, you guys are you're running at the elite level. And uh, Lexi, let's start with you. You're looking at colleges right now. Yeah. How's the college process going? Uh, the college process is going great. I've actually committed to my college and everything just on a few days after signing day. So and I will... Which next, college is that? Next... Well, next year I will be attending The Ohio State University, so I'm so excited. The Ohio State, going to the Buckeyes. Uh, we talked to Champ Page as well, who said he's going to Ohio State. You've, have you talked to him at all about this? Yes, I talk to him all the time about it. It's going to be so nice knowing somebody from the area that I will know going to college with me, because I know going to college, I feel like it's going to have such a different feel being like the new kid, but it's not like anyone's going to notice that because it's such a big school. And of Christina Manning from Westlake is out there also, and yes. Leticia Wright, who ran for Western High School, uh, might have graduated from there also. Yes, yes. I actually met, I believe I met Christina Manning, and um, she's actually a really nice girl. I was actually going for her record um, at the state meet. I was going to try and break eight, but even though I didn't, it was still, it was still a good day, and it was just a good experience. <laughs> and Lexi, before we wrap up here... Um, you talked. You mentioned Olivia Equine earlier today, who's running for Texas A&M. And we we talked about her in our race recap just a couple minutes ago. Uh, she's doing big things at the Division One level. Are you nervous about running D1, or how do you feel about that? I am not nervous at all. To be honest, I'm I'm kind of excited. It's going to be such a different atmosphere. Um, it's going to be it's going to be such a good experience because it's it's just it's going to be such a transition from high school to Division One college and workouts and just teams it's i'm excited i nerves are the last thing i can think about very good and hannah how about you where's the college process uh, brought you to well after a long struggle between i think a couple schools i finally decided to commit to johns hopkins university very cool so we have a future buckeye and a future blue jay uh here <laughs> in the stu in the studio with us uh hannah you're gonna be running at the, d at the d3 level um certainly running times where you would be almost expected to run the division one level how do you how do you feel about that 
Um, I think for a while that was probably one of the main struggles between choosing, like why do I want to run D3 or why would I want to um, run D1? But I think the beauty of running is that time is time and that I really wanted to focus on my academics above everything. I kind of felt that um, Hopkins at the Division three level really enables me to do that and also Hopkins is a great Division three team, so... That was also a plus. As we mentioned, the the Hopkins women's team just won the Centennial Conference Championship. So needless to say, like Hannah just said, she'll be running for a team that uh, knows how to strut their stuff. Oh, yeah. But Lexi, Hannah, thanks for joining us. We wish you the best of luck with the rest of your senior year. And uh, in college, we'll sure to be sure to be in touch with you. And I'm sure we'll be talking to you plenty of times during the outdoor season. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming on. Okay, and coming up, we're going to be talking to Coach Andy Young and distance runner James McBride of Miller Millersville University. They're going to be talking about how their program is going to be cut, potentially, and what they can do to save it. Stay tuned. <laughs>